biggest myth that you're upset about in terms of nutrition? Yeah. In your field? What's, what's the biggest one you keep on hearing and just makes you mad? Um, <clears throat> I think like calories in, calories out is like, yeah. it's a big one. You know what I mean? In, in an essence, like, yeah, I mean, if I, if I ingest, um, less calories than my body needs, am I going to lose weight? Absolutely. But to you know, like for, for a small period of time, like if I'm, um, eating for performance, you know, it's like, you can't like a calorie, the definition of the word calorie means energy. You know, like it, it is definitely, it's, it's, it's a definition. It's, it's, it's heat and energy. Like it's the amount of uh, heat that it takes to heat up one liter of water, one degree Celsius. Right. So basically I'm going to take away energy and, and try and increase my performance. It, like it can't happen. We got to increase performance to increase the amount of output and the amount of calories that my body's, you know, ingesting. So just productivity, you know, and I always use the analogy of a car. Like I'm not going to fuel the car up less. I'm going to put a bigger engine in the car. So the car uses fuel more proficiently, you know? Um, and I think a lot of people do that. They, they, they just start cutting out calories, a lot of fighters. And then it's like they lose weight initially, but yeah. the whole point of a fight camp isn't to make weight. The point of a fight camp is to get better at fighting. You know what I mean? So that would be the biggest one. And like, not to get all nerdy or anything like that, but that'd be the simplest answer. Like I would, I would say, Got it. yeah. Well, uh, since we still have a little bit of time, this is a silly thing to ask, but it's, it's like the personal journey I have of having a first MMA fight in two weeks. And I have to lose pretty much nothing. All my coaches say, it's nothing. So it's six pounds. That's like probably, it's nothing at all, is it? That's a burp and a hiccup right there. <laughs> but because it's, so it's a weird thing to have because you're an expert and, you know, professionally wise, this is nothing. But I'm curious, like, uh, so what, what, what would be your suggestion to, to me? Like, what, what's the best way to go about that? Man, for, uh, for six pounds, I mean, um, I don't know if, how much sodium you're ingesting right now, but like 440 milligrams of sodium can hold up to two pounds of water. So, you know, a couple of days out, if you cut your sodium, uh, you might be able to make weight just from cutting out salt. You know what I mean? Um, uh, one gram of carbohydrate. So every, every kilogram of lean muscle tissue that you hold, and you, you look like a lean guy, you hold yeah. a good amount of muscle. Every kilogram of lean muscle tissue holds on to three grams of glycogen, right? Yeah. That's carbohydrates at your body. So every gram of glycogen holds on to three grams of water. Mm -hmm. So just cutting your carbs three days before your fight, like you'll not only lose the glycogen, but you'll lose the water that's attached to the glycogen. And there, there's just six pounds again, probably. You probably lose about four or five from that. And then like the salt, you know, you probably be down 10 pounds. So down the salt as well. Yeah, yeah. Just, just make sure you don't cut it out too far in advance because uh, there's certain hormones that we have to kind of, your body's, you know, it's a, it's a massive survival mechanism or, you know, um, you know, that's the whole point of it. So if you cut salt out for long periods of time, it releases a hormone called aldosterone and then you start drawing it in, you start bloating anyway. So we want to do it in a very short period of time. So about three days time frame, you cut out salt, cut out carbs a little bit. And, and that doesn't hurt the performance. Of the no, nah, man, you know, actually the, uh, back in the day, the uh, like Olympic marathoners, they'd actually used to do this to improve performance. They'd cut out all their carbs, which would basically send a signal to the body. Like, oh my goodness, we didn't store enough carbohydrates and we didn't use them proficiently. So with that, they would cut them out and then they would they would reload the body with carbs before a race. Right. And then the body would store more carbohydrates and be a lot more proficient at using them. That's basically what you're doing. When you do a good cut, that's basically 100%. You cut out the carbohydrates, you deplete the body, and then you reload the body. So, you know, with the question that you have, like you're like six pounds, I mean, it's gonna be a walk in the park, but yeah. um, the reload the reload is, you know, that's gonna be important. Like it's, you know, how you re reload the body after you lose the weight. That's the most important part. So after the weigh-in, it's, it's about getting the, the carb back in? Carbohydrates, so the way everything comes out is the way it's gotta go back in again. You know, like you, uh, first thing you, you sweat water, you sweat electrolytes, so that's the first thing you got water, electrolytes, and then after you get that, your body's got digestive enzymes in the back of your saliva glands, right? So like when you're dehydrated, if you try and eat something, your body can't break it down. Mm -hmm. That's why like some people that they, they don't realize if they don't drink a lot of water, they don't get like, a, they won't have a bowel movement, you know, like for days, mm -hmm. you know? Okay. So drink the water first, give it time. That's a big problem that a lot of fighters have because they drink water and then all of a sudden that hunger comes and then they eat like crazy and then, yeah. You know, I would say like your body's kind of like up down, you know, it's upside down filter. It wants the food, but then you like plug it up with that first meal. It's like yeah. you're hungry, but you're, you can't eat anymore because your, your belly is just so bloated. You know what I mean? So 
taking time. Water, electrolytes, and then you know slowly incorporate the foods, solids. Yeah. Thanks, thanks for entertaining an amateur. Maybe no, dude, that's, that's awesome. No, man, that's awesome. Uh, quick more questions? Yeah, questions. yeah. Uh, so uh, one interesting thing for me to, to hear is like junk food, uh, does it affect, like let's say, you know, I have a month to the fight and, uh, and I know I can cut weight. For me, it's like just three days before. But if I eat, and I don't really eat junk food, but I'm just curious. So if let's say I'm eating junk food for three weeks, two weeks before the fight, and then suddenly I become a healthy eater, right. does that affect the performance? Like if it's like a few weeks before the fight? Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. Like um, if I'm eating junk food, right, it actually, you know, it'll cause inflammation in the body. Like, you know, like when people think of inflammation, they think of like the joints and stuff like that. Well, you know, inflammation in our gut, it's it's even more pronounced. Like 99% of, of diseases have been uh, uh, um, accumulated to, to inflammation. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So uh, keeping that down, like eating a bunch of junk food causes that inflammation, then I'm stressing the body even more. Mm -hmm. That's gonna lower testosterone, it's gonna, you know, like mm -hmm. reduce my recovery time and things of that nature. The funny thing is a lot of people don't, they're like, I can get away with it because they look aesthetically right. like in shape, right. but they don't realize it. You know, and you know, like genetics do play a huge factor. Some people can eat junk food and they can have a six pack, eight pack, and that, that's great. But I always tell people, it's not where you are, it's like where, it's where you could be. Mm -hmm. You know, when I was in the Marine Corps, we, uh, you know, you have to do three miles in 18 minutes, right? That'd be a perfect PFT. And you had guys that would smoke. You know, and it sounds like I smoke. I've never smoked, but it sounds like it. Like people are like, you don't smoke? I'm like, no. But they had people that would smoke and they were able to do that. And I'm like, what? Just imagine what you could do if you didn't smoke. You know, it's not where you're at, but it's where you could be. And I, I always tell people that, you know, and kind of just remember that. Yeah. This could be off record if, if the answer is not what you want. To no. Say. I mean, the next one. Uh, do you, like, do you avoid junk food yourself, like, as... Like, Hell no. No? Yeah, <laughs> look at me, dude. So, uh, you know, I fought, I fought professionally for 15 years. I'm actually uh, getting back in the cage one more time. Yeah, I'm fighting in May, yeah. So I got 50 pounds to lose. So I'm, I'm uh, I got eight, 50, like five zero. Yeah, I'm 235 right now. I'm gonna be fighting at 185. And you're the wizard. Dude, yeah, like it's like practice what you preach, right? So yeah, I mean, it's gonna be a fun journey. Uh, one last dance, like Lockhart Elite has actually put on the fights in Rome, Georgia. Um, so yeah, you know, like getting back into it, but you know, for 15 years, like being in the Marine, I was in the Marine Corps for 10, fought for 15, I ate perfectly, ate everything. Now I have my son, you know, and like my wife and you know, she's got the genetics, like she can eat anything. And it's like, I like to go out and, and enjoy, you know, uh, I, and you know, I, I try and keep a balance, you know, like it is, it's not like everything's gotta be perfect anymore. You know what I mean? Back in the day, everything had to be perfect. And, right. Now I'm going back to that now that I got to lose 50 pounds, but yeah. So unless the person is like a super athlete, he doesn't have to be like super disciplined for that reason. Like, I mean, eating super food all the time, it's, it's not necessary. Right. You know, that's, you know, it's, it's a huge part of life. Like everything in, you know, the word diet means food you eat in a habitual way. Mm -hmm. So you want to create good eating habits. You know what I mean? Like I never crave McDonald's. Like I never crave fast food. Um, you know, but I will crave like, you know, potatoes and I will eat like a grip load of them, you know, and it's just the quantity that I'm, and I'm, I'm, you know, and the thing is, is, you know, I'll, you know, when I teach uh, my courses and stuff, like when your body's aerobic, your body burns fat. When your body's anaerobic, your body burns carbs. Well, I'm not training anymore, but I'm still pounding those carbs. So like, <laughs> you know, like the body's like, all right, so I, so I kind of balloon up, you know, and, you know, traveling, you know, going, you know, going to movies with my son, you Dude, we're gonna eat candy. He enjoys right. it. It's a good time, but uh, it's gotta be conducive for your lifestyle. There's a lot of people that uh, it's like, man, I wanna. I feel like they don't feel good. They don't, you know, it's like you gotta change those behavior. You know, like those habits. That's nice to, for me to hear. Sometimes I feel like I go too hard on myself without a good reason. Yeah, I push myself to eating like or not eating some some food eating some food and sometimes I'm like eh, is it worth it is it isn't isn't this like decreasing my life quality for no good reason so absolutely no man I, you know like dude people are like you drink I'm like yeah man i'll go out and have a few beers yeah. I'll, i mean a few shots i mean did i every time i go to ireland like we go to the, we go to the <laughs> pubs man and i freaking i tear it up 
But, uh, you know, yeah, that's, that's one of those things. If you're training for a fight, you know, absolutely not, you know. But, uh, you know, just kind of look at where you're at in life. And, um, you know, even off, like, if you're fighting, you know, I don't know if you're, you're, you're doing, you're professional, if you're, you know, that's a goal. No. Myself? Yeah. No, I'm still a beginner, just amateur. Yeah. Do you have any aspirations of being pro? Or? I, tell me that. If, if I can ask, 29, is that too old to start? Because that's on my mind. I'd love to try a professional career, but I'm like... Am I not too old for this? I mean, I, I was athletic for my whole life. Yeah. I did it for a few years, but like a couple of years, but I don't know. Do you think probably 29 is a little bit? You know, one, one, one person told me, one of my friends told me back in the day, he's like, you know, I was, because I was like, oh, I want to be a world champion. I want to be this. I want to mm -hmm. be that. And I was like, man, like as I got started getting older, I was like 23, 24. I was like, man, I was like, dude, you know, like I, I, so and so was in the UFC at this time. And so and so. And he's like, that's their story. Yeah. You have your own story. Like Randy Couture didn't start until he was like 32. You know, uh, Rich Franklin didn't start until his 30s as well. Yeah. Obviously, they're world champions. But that th that was a different story. Like, yeah. you know, Christian Okoye, the Nigerian nightmare, he played for the Chiefs. Never played football in his life. Came from Africa, freaking tried out for the Chiefs and became one of the best uh, fullbacks of all time. You know, it's just like everybody's got the, their own story. So when you say like, am I too old? Like for your story, you might be the guy that like, man, he started when he's 29, you know what I mean? And he became a world champion or became uh, this fighter. Oh, yeah, dude, I, that's, you know, that's, that's the coolest thing. You know what I mean? So it's not, you know, the one thing to me, I'm like, uh, one of my, one of my best friends, James Vick, you know, mm -hmm. he started late and he always says, he's like, man, you know, these guys have been training since they were kids. And I'm like, yeah, but you know what? The thing is, is like when you train for so long, you have so many freaking injuries, so many battle wounds. Mm -hmm. It's like, if I want to train hard like that, and then I started training when I was older, mm -hmm. now that you're older, you're more mature. You're, you know, you're looking at things like, you're trained smarter. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like, you know, which one's better? I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of guys, when you look at people peeking out, now time, like the average champion is like 36, 37. So, you know, might be better to hold out. Thank you so much for telling me that. Yeah, That's yeah. Very <laughs> yeah, bro, absolutely. Sweet. Very last question. And I, yeah, yeah, no worries, bro. Um, your um, most memorable career moment. Oh, <laughs> man. Um, so my business partner and I, you know, we were both in the Marine Corps together. Uh -huh. And we... Uh, I'll never forget it. We were we were out in this, you know, uh, it's called a battle course, and then we uh, we trained at the Martial Arts Center of Excellence in the Marine Corps. And I remember we we're out in the woods one day, and we we're talking like, man, we want to start a company together. And, you know, we we love nutrition. We uh, we did a lot of stuff with nutrition in the Marine Corps. And fast forward years, like uh, this, I think it was like three years ago. Um, we're sitting in T-Mobile. And Connor is fighting Floyd Mayweather, okay. right? So I'm in the backstage because I'm working with Connor. Yeah. But Dan, my partner, Leith, is working with Demi Lovato. Yeah. She's singing the national anthem. Uh -huh. So he's in the back. <laughs> and we're both, like, looking at each other like, nice. man, bro, like, two meathead Marines. Like, <laughs> you know, his client is, you know, singing the national anthem tonight. My client's in basically the biggest combat sports, uh, you know, fight in history. Yeah. And we were like, this is a pretty defining moment. Man. That's pretty awesome. So, yeah, it was, it, was, it was a pretty good time. It was pretty cool. Sweet. Memorable. Yeah. Sweet. Well, cool. Thank awesome. you so much. Of course, man. Thank, Thank you. you. I appreciate it.